Hey, Mike. Hey, Matt. How are you doing? Top of the world, Mike. You know, uh, it's been a wild week. We've appeared in two major newspapers, the New York Times, the paper of record, and uh, today in the L.A. Times. Uh, shocking. Uh, sh shocking. Shocking. Uh, have this honor but uh yes it's been it's been quite a week with all of this uh all this stuff happening yeah yeah it's been crazy um you know i think our parents now finally sort of accept what we're doing here yeah we made it new york times la times you know um my mom start... bought out every new york times paper in all of worcester <laughs> massachusetts last sunday she spent most of the day driving around to buy every physical copy of the newspaper quite a feat yeah well yeah i'm, I'm glad she did i mean you know it was the article was on the front page of the new york yeah. times so um of course you know it wasn't just specifically about us it was about you know convenies in general in japan but you know we were featured and it was yeah what a week it was really cool very cool very cool all right, Matt. Well, hey, you know what? We got to keep it going. We got to yeah. keep that news coming from the Kambini. So, Matt, this week we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to have our, um, you know, survival guide sort of, you know, yeah. deal going on here. Yeah. Um, you know, in the past, you know, when we were growing up, there were these, there were these, this art, this range of books called, you know, something for dummies, you know, like Internet for Dummies, some, you know, Instant Messenger for Dummies. So what we're doing here today... We're going to tell you <laughs> We're going to tell you how to keep cool at the Kombini because Matt it is hot as hell as I'm sure that you know um, and in Japan as well with all the humidity things are really hot and a lot of people are probably wondering you know like how do I keep cool at the Kombini so I think that's what we're going to be talking about today. That's right Mike and for those who have never experienced summer in Japan it really is impossible Mm -hmm. to describe how hot and humid it is mm -hmm. from the moment you step out the door mm -hmm. you probably have 20 to 40 seconds before you are you are dripping in mm -hmm. in sweat and just mm -hmm. stagnant air and in fact olympic athletes have been bowing out of competitions because they can't stand the heat it's that mm. bad yeah. and um no doubt you need like you're saying like a survival guide and wow is it any surprise that the conveni itself comes to the rescue when it's hot we've got a whole bunch of items mm -hmm. to share for how to keep cool but the first one mike yes sir the most basic ac the Kombini oh, yeah. is maybe the most reliable source <laughs> of jacked up AC on the planet. I I don't yeah. know this I don't I don't know this is true, mm -hmm. but something like three percent of all fossil fuels are consumed by air conditioning at Japan's convenience stores. It really is outstanding. <laughs> you walk from outside to in, that cool air washes over those beads oh, of sweat and suddenly, yeah. you know, in an instant you're feeling like Frosty the Snowman in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's nothing like Kombini air conditioning. Like you said, you kind of stumble in, you know, even oh, if you're stumble. in a car, you're just like, you're barely <laughs> make it in. And as soon as you walk through that door, you hear that yeah. that sound, you know, if it's oh, seven, yeah. or Family Mart, dun, 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 dun. boom, yeah, you're back. You are back and better than ever. So, uh yeah, no, AC in the Kombini is definitely a good, you know, uh, strong point of advice for everybody. All right, next, let's talk products. And before we get yes. into food and beverage, we're going to stick with the utility theme here. That's right. And go with the Gatsby Cool Wipes. I was introduced oh, yeah. to, to these by a, by a good friend, a great friend. Mm -hmm. And what these are, ladies and gentlemen, are we're looking at the ice type here. They're, they're body wipes and they're moist, yes. but they have some kind of peculiar substance on them where mm -hmm. you wipe it on your body and 
you know, your, your temperature goes down about 30, 40 degrees Celsius, okay? Yeah. You yeah. know, you use too many of these things, and you got to call 911 to... Uh, you know, start to thaw you out. You know, I, I keep these holstered like Jack Bauer keeps a nine mil strapped to him going into a hostile zone. That's how critical these items are. These Gatsby wipes are here, Mike. Yeah, yeah. They they remind me of actually in the, in the winter time, as you know, there are those the classic sort of hand warmers in Japan yes, where you yes. you shake, shake them, them you shake them up. Keep them in your pocket, and then you just you know you keep them warm. Put them in your boots. You put them in your uh, you know your underwear. Um, but these are yeah, these are wipe versions. These are you're not just holding them. These you get the wipe, and like you said, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. I advise the back, you know, the back, Absolutely. the armpits. Um, but be careful as you as you've mentioned. You know, this is a yeah in the underwear. This is a uh, you know this is a pretty dangerous item. So be careful where you're wiping and how much you're wiping. But yeah, great item. Um, for sure. Um, all right, Matt. Well, yeah, so we talked about some utility items. We got the AC, we got the Gatsby cold wipes. Well, Matt, let's talk about the, some food, right? Absolutely. Because, you know, and you're probably thinking like, what do you mean staying cool with food, you know? But let me tell you, Matt, in the summer, we've got a range of items. There you can is. call them ramen. You can call them cold noodles. You can call it hiyashi chuka. Um, Matt, this is a noodle item. Um, there's many variations of it, but it's basically cold noodles with some cool vegetables and things on top. You pour on some sauce on top mm. and then you eat that. During the summer, this is my go-to. Um, you know, it's not just about like filling your stomach. Like you eat it and you really, really feel refreshed. So I definitely recommend this range of, you know, the hiyashi chuka, the cold noodles, uh, if you're looking to keep cool. Yeah, no doubt about it. Hot noodles get all the attention, especially ramen in Japan, and rightfully yeah. so. They're fantastic. Sure. But these cold noodles, especially the hiyashi chuka, don't get really much attention at all, but they mm -hmm. are truly outstanding and a lifesaver. They got all kinds of great toppings, usually some thinly sliced scrambled egg, some very refreshing thin slices of cucumber, mm. some pickled uh, ginger often comes with it as well. And then uh, usually a, a half-boiled egg. Also, it typically comes with a with a little mustard. But you think, oh, mm. is that so good in the heat? But it, for whatever reason, it does oh, the yeah. trick. It does Get the trick. Get a blast through your nostrils, and that somehow is cooling with that yes. very light, almost citrusy ponzu-ish sauce that you pour over the top. Mm. Um, yeah, Mike, eating this in an air-conditioned room in the summertime that is oh, peak boy. life right mm -hmm. there okay oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah all, all right, right mike uh what do you say we take a look at the beverage section oh, yes, for sir. a minute here mm -hmm. and uh the convini wow they've been innovating a lot on the cool beverage front mike and yes, we're gonna take a look at a Wrap here. This is out of Family mm. Mart. This is a seasonal item. This one in particular, it's a grape wrap. Mm. But these are cups. You grab them out of the freezer, you stick them into the to the machine. They whip them up, and boom! Mm -hmm. You put a straw in that boy. It's like drinking a like a slushy almost, like a thick oh, slushy. And they are claiming, Mike. Yeah. This is fifty percent fruit juice. <laughs> now I I there's no way. I think uh, if we were to put them under a Jack Bauer style interrogation, I think they would admit they added a zero to that 50 there. <laughs> we don't have time for that. So um, still looks outstanding. Looks outstanding. Yeah, the frap. Um, I like the seasonal version of this, the grape, the muscat yep. grape. Oh, boy, that's even chillier than normal. Um, yeah, Matt, this looks amazing, and this is a great range of products, like you said, taking advantage of this the new sort of coffee slash drink related technology they've got at the Combini these days. Um, and uh, yeah, this is, you know, um, another popular item in the summer in Japan. It's the snow cone, the oh. kakigori. Mm. Well, I mean, I think this is probably mm. as close as you're going to get at the Combini. Um, but uh, yeah, this is one to definitely check out if you're you know, feeling hot at the Combini. Man, how do they not have cocky gory machines in the Combini? It's a good question. That it's a good question. Wow. Yeah. All right. 
Correct. So what? What? All right, Matt. So what all else right. we got in terms? We got of trades? one. We got one more here, Mike. And um, mm-hmm. of course, we got to talk about the legendary Pakari Sweat. Literally an IV, a drinkable oh, yeah. IV. We went through the history of this product several mm-hmm. months ago. It is actually inspired by an IV. But yes. here, Mike, they've done something spectacular. There are yes, two sir. versions we want to talk about here. One is the bag, the jelly oh, bag. The bag. You know, people are thinking, ah, jelly in a bag, that sounds pretty gross. No. Mm. You get one of these boys, you squeeze mm. that thing mm. like you're hanging on for dear life because you're mm-hmm. trying to cram every last drop oh, into your gullet God. within two, three seconds. You crush that pouch and boom. <sighs> You're back to life. The jelly bag of Pakari sweat, literally life-saving. Yes, yes. Love it. Um, and then I think, yeah, there's one more sort of new version that we're going to take a look at as well. Is that is that right? Yeah, yeah Mike. This is the slurry. Um, this is uh, <laughs> the ice slurry. Uh, neither of us have had this yet. No. I got to believe this is some kind of like a slushy. I think the word they, they should have used is yes. slushy. Slurry yeah. typically refers to uh, like Ooh. concrete or uh, clay. <laughs> yes. I think they should have gone with slushy here. Yeah. Um, again, in a bag, you just squeeze that boy and mm. boom, you are many degrees cooler. Yeah, man. Um, so yeah, just in terms of the the jelly to start, yeah, totally agree. This is a classic right here. And like you said, a drinkable IV bag. And what I love about the jelly version, it's almost like they've gone from IV to drink, back to IV. Like maybe yeah. you should just hook yourself up to this, for, and literally like um, inject it into yourself. And Matt, this who boy, this slurry going on here. Um, our podcast listeners can't see, but geez, ooh, Pete, this yeah. looks like you know old saint nick up in the uh the north pole oh, yeah. it's just like mm. you know go walking through a blizzard and he's just kind of like he's appeared out of nowhere um this looks cold as not hell cold <laughs> as you know the north pole um and i don't know i mean i'm interested to see how you know this compares to the jelly and the drink but um very exciting for you know the the, the hot people here in the summer absolutely all right, Matt. Well, hey, we, we've almost got there with the slurry, but I think we should take a chance, you know, take the time to talk about one last little section, one yeah. last little zone. Matt, that's we're, we're talking about the the ice cream at the convenience. Um, yeah. And so first, in terms of if you want to keep cool, you know, I mean, there's a lot of options, but there's nothing like the Gardi Gardi Coon. Um, the Gardi Gardi Coon, we've talked about it recently. It's just frozen ice that's mm. flavored on a stick. Um, and it's ice, so when you bite it, I mean, you're getting that crack, 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 you know, the, the real crackle, um, and it's just super refreshing. I mean, everybody loves Gotti Gotti Coon. Literally a block of sweetened ice. It's hard. <laughs> it's great. If you want to cool off quickly, mm-hmm. Gotti Gotti Coon is the play, no yeah. doubt about it. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. All right, Matt, and then one more. We, we got one more ice cream selection to talk about um mm. yes sir as you can see bag. again we're looking at bag technology here uh, matt <laughs> what we're talking about is coolish and coolish is as you as we just talked about the Picardi sweat jelly this is the same thing except this time it's got ice cream inside of it so this is you know you've got the jelly you've got the slurry and then you've got the true ice cream inside of a bag um, Matt, is, you know, what, what else can you really say? I mean, there's, is there any qu- way to keep cooler than Coolish? I'm going to be honest. I've actually, I've never had a Coolish, Mike. Um, oh, that's, right. Um, that's right. It's embarrassing to say this. I yeah. will, I will say it does look great. Mm-hmm. I like the idea of a bag full of soft serve ice cream. You mm. give it a good squeeze and boom, mm. you're just getting a huge squirt of vanilla soft serve or whatever flavor you got. Um, if it's in a bag, I like it. Yes. Yes. Eventually, hopefully, everything will be in a bag. We've talked about this God before. Willing. But God yeah. willing. We'll see what happens. All right, Mike. That wraps up our segment, our advice on keeping cool at the Conveni. Uh, hopefully, actually, this is too late. Uh, by the time this is out, all the athletes will be gone, so we won't be able to save any right. uh, athletes uh, from right. heat stroke or anything like that. I hope they had many Conveni along the marathon route. So runners could pop in, get a quick cool, cool blast AC, 
maybe a uh, Pakari Sweat slurry, and then get back out there on the on the racetrack. Um, all right, Mike, uh, it's time to move on here to uh, the mm-hmm. Chicky Wars. As usual, yes. we got to talk about new fried chicken products at the convenience. The last couple of weeks have been hot, hot, hot with the Chicky mm-hmm. Wars. This week, things cooling off a little bit. Just one new product. Uh, we got a new Kataage Kun coming out of Lawson. Mm-hmm. This is known flavor, like 230. Yeah. Um, it's a bit of a stretch here to call it a new flavor. This is a yes. lemon flavored Kataage Kun, Mike, with a uh, tie mm-hmm. up to a uh, female pop star. But you know the background of that. Yes, that's right. So we're talking. Well, we had a little bit of a. Uh, well, anyways, we're talking about Sakura Zaka 46. Formerly known as Keaki Zaka 46, all sort of under the umbrella of the AKB group, which are these like girl super groups in Japan. Yeah. And, um, you know, Keaki Zaka was super popular for the past couple of years. I guess Sakura Zaka, they've changed. I don't really know the, the sort of the, the behind the scenes on that. I'm sure some of our listeners do. Anyways, Matt, yeah, we're looking at a tie up here with Sakura Zaka 46 and Karage Kun in the form of lemon flavor. And I gotta say, Matt, you know how I feel about this. I mean, like you said, it's a stretch to call this a new item, but, um, you know, is this gonna be bad? I I can't imagine. I, I, I can't imagine. No, I'm sure it's gonna be great. Can't go wrong with uh, lemon and fried chicken. The packaging, I like it. They, you know, it's uh, long eyelashes, pink colors, definitely <laughs> play on the female pop star there. Um, and they've turned the O in lemon into the shape of a lemon which i thought was mm. pretty darn clever yeah. um that's that wraps up the chicky wars for this week mike maybe we'll see a few more coming out next week yeah yeah unfortunately kind of a slow week for the chicky wars but um let's just go ahead and check out the scoreboard matt um so this week we've got some numbers some interesting numbers we've got family mart 29 lawson 34 7 11 72 Mini Stop 30, Daily Yamazaki 8, Seiko Mart 8, and New Days 16. What, what do you think? Yeah, these are very surprising numbers here, Mike. Uh, Family Mart 29. 29. They never play that low. 7 11, 72, way down there. Mini Stop hit 30. I think that's the first time they've hit 30 since we've put them on the, on the scoreboard. Uh, yeah. Other than that, it's, it's, it seems to be a down week this week. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that's pretty much the only way you can put it. I, I don't really have a good explanation for it. Obon, the big summer vacation, yeah. is coming up, but you think that would affect next week? I don't know, Matt. Yeah, hopefully this is not a sign of uh, things to come. Um, hopefully this is just a little bit of a lull. God willing. All right, Matt. Well, hey, let's go on to our winners and losers this week. Um, and, yeah, let's just start it off with your loser. So, Matt, what are we looking at here yeah mike um this is the spam musubi which is a Hmm. pork and egg rice sandwich i won't call it a rice ball because it's uh it's nori with uh Mm -hmm. with rice and it's sandwiching uh some spam a slice of spam and Mm -hmm. a slice of scrambled egg here yeah now i actually don't mind this product I think this is fine. Sure. This is this is a classic Okinawan product. So they're bringing this yeah. out to the whole of Japan. They're giving everybody mm-hmm. the treat of this spam rice ball sandwich here. Yeah. What I'm concerned and confused about is they're mm-hmm. also saying this is tuna mayonnaise flavor. So oh. in the bottom right of the label right. there, it says tuna mayonnaise. Oh, you're right. Where is the tuna mayonnaise, and why is it also paired with a slice of spam and egg? I, th- oh. I, I don't get it, Mike. I don't know if we need to pair up tuna mayonnaise with uh, pork and egg spam here. Yeah, Matt, you're you're exactly right. I was looking at this. I thought, hey, you know, Okinawa's finest getting its, you know. It's, you know, nationwide release, pretty exciting, but you're exactly right. This is a mystery, and this is a sort of uh, twist that I don't think one would expect here. We've got, yeah, the great nori, the rice, the egg, and then the spam, which 
you know, I know spam, a lot of people kind of like, you know, think it's, it's funny, um, but spam, you know, yeah, totally like, a, you know, a major sort of um, absolutely uh, thing, especially in Okinawa, Hawaii and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, what is going on? I guess this mayonnaise sauce in here Maybe. includes a little be, bit right? of tuna. It's gotta be. And it just doesn't seem necessary. You cut that out, you've got a great item. You put it in there, I mean, I guess it's still probably okay, but yeah, man, I, I this seems like they, they mm. sort of um they sort of screwed themselves here, you know, adding that little extra bit of uh, tuna mayo. I think so. All right, Matt. Well, that's unfortunate because that's pretty exciting, the you know, nationwide release. All right, Matt. Well, going on to my loser this week, this is um not specifically this yeah. week, just sort of in sure. general. Yeah. Um we're talking about the uh the Sasami, which is like a chick or chicken tenderloin or just like a chicken tender basically. Yeah. Um it's a part of the, the, the chicken breast that I guess is like softer, apparently. Um and this is the lemon and lime flavor, which hey, I probably like that. But the problem I've got here, Matt, is you can see this thing, it's just a rinky dink little chicken tender that hasn't been deep fried, so it's it's kind of like a, a uh, chicken, uh, it's kind of like um, salad chicken, you know? Um, yeah, so anyways, the problem I have with this this item is that, you know, we already have salad chicken, which is the chicken breast, um, and in a variety of flavors, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, it's fairly cheap. I would say it's not much more expensive than this. And then we have this, the, the tenderloin, the sasami, which is just this, as you can see, this kind of measly little, like, pretty uh, sad little... Little, you know, like wingding here, um, and it just never makes sense to me. Why wouldn't you get in the salad chicken? You know, and a lot of people don't even like salad chicken. So this is like salad chicken, sort of like bastard brother. I, I don't know, Matt. I, I've this has always kind of confused me. The sasami. I don't know. What do you have any thoughts on it? No, I took a hard look at this one too, Mike. Uh, it looks strikingly similar to a kind of uh, special treat that we get for our cats. <laughs> <laughs> almost looks identical as a matter of fact and i'm also yeah. struck this is an okasan shokudo item right mike which right. is uh mom's kitchen mm -hmm. which is uh those are items that are meant to be easy to prepare uh like home cooked meals to kind of right. you know make sure you're feeding your family a nice thing to think that this would come from mom's kitchen yeah. I'll tell you what this came from my mom's kitchen I'll tell you what, I'd be going on a hunger strike. You know, this is not <laughs> this is not a good looking item here. Yeah. Yeah, 39 calories. Yeah, imagine mom brings it out. She splits this up between, you know, yeah, mom's you know, kitchen the... in like Soviet Union 1951 <laughs> here. What is What? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's go on and do, on to our winners, Matt. Um, we're gonna look at what you have first, but um, so what are we looking at? Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, Mike, sir. Uh, we're at Mini Stop. Speaking of keeping cool yeah. at the Convini, mm. uh, they got a new parfait coming out. This is the apple mango parfait here, mm. Mike. And of course you can uh, jack it up, get twice the fruit for a few extra, a couple extra bucks there. You know, I looked at this, Mike, and man, we got some juicy, juicy slices of mango on top, that vanilla soft serve, and then that pool of fruit and fruit mm. juice at the bottom. Wow. Bright colors. I love it, Mike. I got to say, if there's anybody, say, over the age of 20, 22, hasn't lost their virginity yet, <laughs> I think this is a reasonable substitute, probably as good. Uh, this looks absolutely outstanding. Oh my goodness! Yeah, Matt, they might. We might have to be start calling you. You know, mini stop Matt these days. I gotta say, nah, you. Uh, I would. Nah. You have become a. There's no doubt, especially mini stops parfaits, and it's you know it's ice creams. I'd say, you have uh, recently picked up a lot of winners from there, and I can't object. I mean, yeah. this looks absolutely <laughs> outstanding. Awesome. Two times the look at that. It's unclear through the picture. You know, did they just stack it up a little higher? Not sure, but nobody knows. Rest assured that that's double the fruit in there, Matt. I mean, yeah. What what can you really say? This just looks absolutely outstanding. I think we looked at a melon 
version of the main mm, stock parfait oh, yeah. a couple oh, months yeah, ago that did. looked great mm. but this might have just topped it topped the it. juice on that mango is Dang. out of this world mm. um matt what an item beautiful uh and uh yeah that's that's a winner right there stunning all right, Matt. Well, I've got you know I've got a pretty controversial winner this week that is not going to be beautiful. I'm feeling a little bit charitable, oh, Daily Matt. Yamaza. Oh, We're boy. going over to Daily Yamazaki. Oh, no, not... You're feeling charitable this week, Matt, and we're going over to Daily they, Yamazaki. They just blend into the page. Yes, sir. Are you kidding? Well, let me? me tell you. Really? This is what we're looking at. Wow. Yes, oh, Matt. You know, there's that famous. Say- oh yeah, there's that famous <laughs> saying. You know what is it? A book. You can't judge a book by its cover right so yeah, i think this would be a um yeah. a very good example of that so what we're looking at is a disfigured pizza like shaped you know monster of a onigiri a rice ball but let me clear some things up here why does it look so monstrous it looks sort of burnt what's going on there it's well burnt, matt yeah. this is a shoyu that's soy sauce flavored yeah Yaki onigiri. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yaki onigiri. So yaki onigiri is grilled onigiri. A lot of people, you know, I don't, some people might not even know about this, but um, yeah, another way you can enjoy onigiris, usually it's just rice without the, uh, without the seaweed on, on the, the outside. You just grill it, usually at a BBQ. You know, you grill this thing and it's great. And this one, Matt, the reason why I love this, you, you called it right from the start. This is not only that. This is with the corn inside. Yeah. And I got to say, Matt, yesterday we actually had a little BBQ out in front of my house with my man, some of my friends, and there was something missing. And you know what? I think if I had this guy right here, it would have made that BBQ complete. So, hey, I'm feeling charitable this week. Daily Yamazaki, you know, forget the, the image, but the, the substance itself looks pretty, pretty tasty. You know, Mike, there's a new Dune coming out this summer, and I'm going to be looking closely at the credits to see if there's a, if the, if this yaki onigiri with the corn mixed in doesn't show up on the, somewhere on the credit list. This thing, I mean, I'll tell you what, this thing looks like a, like, like, a, you know, Indiana Jones dug it up somewhere in the middle of uh, Egypt. This thing was buried with uh, King Tut 2,000 years ago. I mean, what is going on here? This is one of the worst looking items. Even for daily Yamazaki, this yeah. looks bad. I mean, it's just sort of charred on the edge. It's got these oh, little yeah. bits of corn that oh, kind of yeah. resemble like stained teeth uh, that are riddling... <laughs> Do they not? They look like uh... they do. They do. <laughs> they do. Yeah. Um. I. Hey, yaki onigiri truly is one of the great treats, and oh, something yeah. you don't discover until you know a little bit of time in Japan because you don't. Yeah. It's it's, it's not. It's, you got to go to the right place to to get one uh, or know oh, yeah. what it is. But man, it is, it is good. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's a winner. Matt, sometimes you have to look inside your heart and you know spread that love on, to those scroll, who. Let's scroll don't up. Get... There's a hot dog that almost disappears into the page. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> we got, we got, we... There's a there's a there's a there's a <laughs> hot dog wrapped. There's a hot dog wrapped in this white bun. Mm. The, the photo is so ex. There's so the exposure is so high on this photo. The white bun almost blends disappears into the website's white background yeah um wow this God, is so somebody impressive. help this company i mean can we get like a 12 year old with an instagram account to help out uh daily sure. yamazaki this is my god get them like all right all right eight or something it's ridiculous uh, all right all right hey we're closing it up we got to spread the love every once in a while to daily yamazaki but um all right, Matt, that, uh, that wraps it up for this week's Winners and Losers and, it looks like, um, this week's episode. So, uh, as always, Matt, um, thanks to everybody who bought us a chickie. Of course, a huge shout-out to Carrie G. St. Michelle with those Thank 20 you. chickies. We really appreciate that. Crew of Japan podcast, Jeff Bailey and Anonymous, um, all 
Uh, thank you all so much. You can buy us a, a coffee or a chicky at buymeacoffee.com slash boys. We really appreciate it. Um, for everybody who's listened to the podcast, um, if you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, whatever it is, you know, please share the podcast and leave us a rating. We'd really appreciate it. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, hey, how's it going? Um, you know, we've had a lot of comments recently and we really appreciate that. So we, um, you know, again, please uh, remember to subscribe and leave a like. Um, we are really active on social media, especially Twitter. We have Facebook and Instagram accounts, but Twitter's where we're most active. Check us out there. Um, if you want to share a Kambini memory or Kambini composition, go to www.anchor.fm slash boys and leave us a message. Um, Matt, what a great week. I hope everybody stays cool at the Kambini, um, but for now, I'll see you at the Kambini. I'll see you at the Kambini, Mike. Oh. Kambini boys, they're the Kambini boys, they're the Kambini, they're the Kambini, they're the Kambini.